good guys, Lawrence Wayne here again, and I'm back with LOS. Now, not much has actually changed with the hardware, it's still the big old mess of wires. Did fix a problem with the power supply unit system here, but that's minor. And, well, the most major thing I've got to show you is that the programming language is a little more powerful, and that there's input and output that isn't just the screen. So, I got its awesome little demonstration for you guys. Yeah, I also got a calculator app as well. Hold on. You get Skype before that annoys me. Okay, um, so, this little app here called Scratch.los. And if you know what Scratch is, it's this programming thing which is practically useless and terribly slow, and its only functional use is to teach programming. Now this slider can't move yet, because it's actually right now it's trying to connect, but you can't see it. As you can see here, there's two orange LEDs here, which indicate connection with USB. Then there's this big USB cable that goes all the way around and basically plugs into my laptop. See here, and then we have Scratch. Now there's this little thingamajig that you can buy for Scratch. It's called a Scratch Board. Here you've got the scratch board watcher, so you can see the name there. And this is basically the little scratch board thing. Now the thing costs a whopping $80, which is extremely expensive. So um, I decided that, well, actually I got it from a suggestion from my IT teacher, to implement this in LOS. So when I run this little pr scratch program with the little silly little green flag it'll try to connect and over here these orange LEDs will now start flickering and lighting up and such and now we can move this little slider and when we move this slider the little cat on screen here responds now the little number she's saying is actually the coordinates of my touch screen when I'm touching it, so I'm gonna see if you can. No, it kind of blurs out. Let's see if I can show you both of them at the same time. Damn it! Yeah, the brightness of these screens is too much difference. But basically, when you move the slider here, the cat's size changes, and whenever you touch the screen here, the numbers he says. And then here you have the sort of raw values. The sound, the light, C and D do absolutely nothing. Button is false whenever I'm touching the screen. So. You also see that this is slightly slow response time. Whenever I move the slider, it kind of lags, if you want to call it that. Uh, it's because L code, which the programming language this demo app is written in, my own programming language, still runs a little slow and such when using serial. But it's doable. I could probably make it a lot faster if I really wanted to. Like stop sending A and B when I'm touching the slider section. Right now, these values are pretty much just broadcast as is, and they're not converted in any way. So the A and B values don't actually represent any sort of pixels on the screen. But I could make it that they do and such. So, that's about it. I could of course connect physical sensors to here and make the L code program take input from those sensors. So about that, I actually have something working in progress for that this here connection menu. So we've got the serial inputs and outputs and when you click on one you can assign it to say I want this output to be an LED and then that output becomes an LED. This one becomes a speaker which I made to buzzer because the word speaker didn't fit in that box and send that to an LED 
speaker. It's currently still very glitchy, but the way it saves it is not that COM1 is this, COM2 is that, COM. It actually saves it in a, this large EEPROM table, which makes re retrieving the values a lot easier. So we've got, now if I try sign the next speaker, it won't work. So you can only have two speakers. The system only supports that many. I could set it to an ODM when I try to set it to a speaker. It comes D3. And I can't set the inputs or the serial ports yet, only the outputs, the two ones. I'll add servo and such here later. So that's that. There's one last thing to show, I guess. Uh, calculator. So it can go. Now, this is just a bitwise calculator. I did this to test the bitwise math. So you can do 45 for 52, and you can backspace. So you get a little numpad here. Push OK, then you select the second number. Let's make it 5. Say OK. You select the function left bit shift, and that makes. So 45 shifted left, 5 is 1440. I can actually do all of the bitwise maths, so it's kind of silly these buttons at the bottom. I could make it that it just does every single math operation with those two. I should make it like that. But this was just a little test for the numpad and bitwise math. Of course, the numpad thing doesn't replace the full keyboard. You still have here. That's still working. I really love my full keyboard because of the genius way I made, implemented this. But, yeah, so that's, that's it for the LOS updates. I hope you enjoyed it. it. It seems like the production, if I'm ever gonna do a production run of this system, it's gonna be cheaper than the scratch board, so there's a selling point already. It's a little slower than the scratch board, of course, but, yeah, whatever. A lot more useful now. It's got a screen. Yeah. So yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and stuff. Uh, read your comments. You seem to be complaining a lot about how I keep moving the camera around too much because I don't use a stand. Sorry about that. I wanted to use a stand, but you can't use a stand when you need to record this computer screen as well. So uh, yeah, bye.